Welcome back, guys, to another Tuskline Podcast video, episode 82. As always, before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like, comment down below, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video here on this channel. And as you can see, we've got a guest on the podcast, Emilio. How are you, bro? I'm good. How welcome, are you? Emilio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 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 Thank you. Uh, he's been on a lot of our vlogs. Um, you might have seen him. Um, and he also has his own TikTok channel. So make sure you go follow his, uh, all his socials. Links are in the description. Make yeah. sure you go check him out. Oh, in the corner. And yeah, um, boys, let's get on with it. Round 17 review. First of all, we're all at the game. Bulldogs, Cronulla. <laughs> what a game, man. We won it on go uh, extra time, actually. It was one point. Matt Burden kicks a field goal after his third attempt. Like 15, 15, 14, man. Well, what a number. What bro, a game. Bro, what, like, a game. What, a, what a game, man. Like, that, I, I said on the vlog, that was better than Parramatta. For some reason, I don't know why, maybe maybe because of the extra time and yeah, exactly. stuff like that. Just just rubbing it into those Sharks fans that were sitting in that kennel, man. Yeah, yeah that, that were... Look, they came, of course, for one reason. I want to cause problems. Like, they're yeah. in the Oh, kennel. they're drunk off their head, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the shot, the sh <laughs> usually the away team sit on the corner, the far corner. Yeah. They chose to sit they right chose in the kennel. Sat right in Coincidentally. The kennel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I right across us. How did it got into the, what's it called? They probably the bought, you can buy kennel. Can tickets. you buy yeah, kennel? Yeah, yeah no, they, oh, had, okay. they had one mate that was a doggies fan. Yeah. Oh, so but this, this guy was losing it. Me and you, but you mainly. <laughs> mate, I'm not gonna start like there, bro. No, but it's, it's on video, so no, like, no, you know, no, you, like, go watch, it, go it watch the vlog. The video, like. <laughs> <laughs> go watch the vlog. Uh, link is also in the description. No, Make it sure you go check it out. Shows the whole thing, but like I'll. Bro, I was silent the whole time. I didn't want to say anything, but then <laughs> as soon as they started like abusing me. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna throw it out there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But look, at the end of the day, it's only a footy game. Yeah, man. look, it is what it Anyways, is. Anyways, but let's talk about the yeah. actual game, guys. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. We've teamed up with Sports Heads. They're a great company that cut up faces of NRL players across the league. You might have seen them at stadiums. They're the big heads that fans hold up in the air. Make sure you use the discount code TLP10. Buy one and you'll get ten percent off. Back to the pod. Now, what are your thoughts on the game, boys? Um, it, it was actually terrible. The performance was bad. Um. Kept doing heat ups, no spreading the ball. It was just, we we're just lacking something in the attack. Defense is again what won us the game because the amount of chances Sharks had, their forwards, their wingers, everyone making meters. Like, I'm surprised we won that game. But again, if you're going to win the Premiership, those are the games you got to win. And we won it. So, yeah, th that's basically it. We, we didn't play good, but we got the win. Emilio? Yeah, I think like good teams like us, even with the average performance like that, we, we find the way to win. Yeah. And that's what we did in the end. I feel like the Bulldogs of last year would have just slipped in the end, mm. conceded like exactly, three yeah. tries. But we, we stuck by it. We were a bit off, but we, we stuck by it. And what made that win feel very good is the fact that we've proven to be very consistent mm. with yeah, our exactly. performances. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and on that is like, you look at Bulldogs uh, uh, along the year, uh, sorry, this year in particular is that, we always lose by Matt Burden misses, missing his kicks or just little fine margins not going our way. But this time actually um, went our way where Nico Hines misses two kicks. Yeah, yeah. He missed a field goal right in front of the, the goals. Terrible. And then you found Matt Burden, like I think it was like 40 metres out, he kicked it. Or something nah, around that. Nah, not 40. That. Was it 30? 35. 30 30 35 30 metres. Right, whatever. Kicked yeah. the field goal and we got the win. So things went our way that game. And if it was another... Another game, another day, it probably would have not uh, went our way. To be honest, sh that was Sharks' game. Yeah. Like, yeah. all yeah, over the park, field position-wise, possession-wise, you know, just, they beat us, I think, on every stat. We should have lost that game. Yeah, we this, I've said it, I said it with the with the Paro game, and I'll say it again. Those performances alone is what, that's why we're going to win the comp. That is, I don't think Penrith have got that same hunger anymore. No. Like, they, they can still finish games, but they can't finish it the way the Bulldogs will finish it. And the difference- Same as Sharks, same yeah. as Storm, same as- Bro, bro yeah. all these teams in the top eight don't have what the Dogs have, is that mentality. Right. And you know who, you know who, um, who is to blame or who is to thank? Stephen Crichton. Yeah, Stephen right, Crichton is good. the man that is, good, is holding his team together. That's why, that's why, if we miss Stephen Crichton, same, the same way we missed him in the Roosters game, see how things fell apart? Bro, he's got a special connection with his players. He's the captain. He holds yeah. that team together. He, you know, he brings them up when when someone gets, you know, sim binned or mm. some something doesn't go our way. And just we want to play for him. He was uh, after the game. He went into the shed and Hines was there and he was quality captain. Man. That's a proper leader. Yeah. Lifting yeah. him yeah. up and yeah. that so. just shows the difference of Stephen Crichton. And for me, I think I think he him mm. right now has been the best player in the NRL this year. Mm, I, I think, think he's so. been outstanding. By of the year too. I think by of the yeah. year, of course. Like well, he started slowly. He, he did. He was a bit quiet to start, but now he's really showing. But his the, I think the reason why I think if Sharks were to win it, it's because of their forwards. Their forwards were outstanding, and it just look as much as Max King and Sammy Hughes has been performing this year. I still think we need a quality forward pack. 
just one big world class uh, forward pack that's going to help us in the future. Yeah, well, that's another example of our heart that we've shown this year yeah. because of how small our forward pack mm, is exactly. coming against like a forward pack like the Sharks one yeah. and, and overcoming it. Mm. It's just another example of how great we are this and year. Yeah, it's, it's a fitness that comes with it. You know, they, they wanted to buy these players due to, you know, the, the, the fitness levels, these players can handle more fitness, more minutes in the game and, you know, and it's paid off. So it, it, it's a good win for the Bulldogs. We first Warriors this week and hopefully we can get... Good time. It'll good be time. a four-point win, basically. Yeah, yeah no, we'll, we'll smack the Yeah, Warriors. but uh, next game, boys, uh, Newcastle, Parramatta. 34-26. Uh, a very good game. Uh, Newcastle got... <laughs> Emilio's <laughs> laughing already. <laughs> uh, got over the edge. Uh, Newcastle at their home ground. Bad, Bradman best over 350 metres. That was yeah. insane. At his best. One of the most metres in a game by a so single player. Yeah. Ranked third. Yeah, yeah, so it was a good performance from the Knights, in particular Bradman Best. He, so yeah, he put a double try as well. So, yeah. but that was just luck, man. Mm. And I thought Mitchell Moses like had a good game as well. Yeah, he like outstanding. Good. He was playing outstanding. What a week he's had. Yeah, yeah. what a from week. Origin from Origin to the club the, level. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get the win. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Yeah, but still, he played his best footy. I'm yeah, telling you, it's what it's, it's his team that is holding and him down. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the Trent Barrow effect. With yeah, it, it was is. like definitely is. If you've got him as coach, no matter how good your team is, I just. You can't tip eels anymore. You got to exactly. go against them because they're just lacking something now. And I think the season's done for them. They'll wait until next season, yeah. find a new coach, Para and then choke a matter. They're gonna <laughs> restart. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> that leads me to wonder, Zach Lomax, like he's gonna come into this team where Dragons are building. They're doing mm -hmm. so good. So it was in a mess now. But yeah. Newcastle Knights find themselves top eight race again. again that top yeah. eight race is like you got. Uh, fifth place in Bulldogs, 20 points. Then you go all the way to like 13, it's 18 yeah, points. Yeah. That, that's and our crazy. points differential is what's going to help us come mm. the end of the season. What about Will Price's uh, debut try? Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. good. That, that was that's outstanding, good. bro. And his yeah. dad was in the um, <coughs> stands. stands, in the stands yeah. well. His dad's about seven foot tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's tall, yeah, His dad used to that. play for Super League back in the days. Oh, oh did really? he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. well, look, it was a good performance from the Knights. And Para did put effort. You know, it was 34-26 at the end, but... Again, Knights too good at home. They've all they're always good at home, uh, but finally for the last game, Melbourne and Canberra. Sixteen six, man. This was uh, this was I, I didn't expect I didn't expect it from Storm, first half was pretty close. Uh, it was nil nil for like thirty five minutes yeah. of the game. Mm -hmm. A lot of errors. It was tough, but few mistakes from both teams. Uh, this reminded me of the old Raiders, just dominant and just keeping themselves in the game. But Melbourne at the end just showed their class and just ran I away didn't, the game. I didn't expect it from Melbourne. Like yeah. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought it would have been a bigger blowout. To be honest, I mean that's how it's been with Melbourne this year. They like they haven't really blown any teams out except for Parramatta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. they always like <laughs> find a way to win in the end. Mm. Like they haven't been playing their best footy, but they're still leading. And leading they're still the table. first. Like that's what we've mentioned. Th it that's what time. I mean. Like, like that, they're not really a dominant. I don't side. feel a team's been. You know, you could say have been first. If it's you know what I mean. Like you can't say Penrith are. Penrith are like... Yeah, and just Sharks have been Cowboys, off. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's been a weird it's season. It's so close. It's, it's so close. And I think that's why, because it's so close, no one's really stood out from the other. So... Um, and think about it. Melbourne have Papenhausen out, Munster out. Grand didn't play and they also had another player out. So just imagine when those four players come in, I think you're going to see a much better side of Melbourne Storm. Yeah, and Jerome Hughes had a fantastic game and he's... There's been a lot of pressure on him because Munster's out. He's got to carry the team. Um, and he's doing fantastic. Um, Last year wasn't the best year, but this yeah, year he's really the stepped yeah. up. Uh, K.O. Weeks, again, stepping up. He, he's good at fullback. He's very quick too. He scored a try. Um, he also had a try save, I'm pretty sure. he had a. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, Canberra... I don't know, man. They've dipped in a form, especially last week against the Tigers. They got pumped. Yeah. Three yeah. defeats now. In three a row. defeats in a row. Their minus different like points differential is like minus three. It's three digits. So oh, I don't know. Done. It's, it's, it's not ever done. since sorry. Oh, no, no, no. It's ever since Fogarty got injured. Yeah. I think that's when their season went down because before that they were in the top four, top five race, and ever since he left, it just. Because you need a good halfback for your forward to, forwards to do well, and that's what they're lacking. K Winks has done an incredible job, and now when Fogarty comes back, I think you keep K Winks and put Ethan Strange on the bench, or you put K Winks fullback. I'd put <laughs> Ethan Strange at lock. Oh, can he? He'll yeah. play lock. Yeah, that's he's not a bad good player. Yeah. They've got good good youngsters. K Winks, Ethan Strange, very good players. Ethan, um, um, Schiller. He's oh. out, but I don't know why yeah. they dropped him for some reason. He was he scoring was so many tries on the wing. So yeah, look. Canberra, they're still in the top eight race. You can never write them off. They'll still manage probably to get in the top eight. Um, but yeah, that's a wrap up to the round 17 review. Uh, let's quickly go on to round 18 tips. Uh, All right, the so special, I'll do it. I'll I'll get the, the special guest for this week is Lockie's um, 
Lock is NRL. NRL. Yeah. NRL. Uh, he has a lot of sport content. Um, what's it called? Photos, pics, videos post, on post his some channel. Great content. Great it's content. Yeah, 4,000 yeah. followers, something yeah. around that. So make sure you go follow him on his Instagram account. And yeah, first game, Anthony? Um, the first game, awesome. we've got Parramatta versus South Sydney. So uh, who's, who's tipping, who's tipping, who's tipping boys? I'm going to stick with South. South, South will uh, pump uh, Parramatta there at the home game. Yeah. So. Emilio, what do you reckon? I'm going to say South 1 to 12. South 1 to 12? Yeah. yeah, I'm going South 1 to 12. It'll be a close one. I yeah. Reckon. yeah, I reckon I'll go South. Yeah, as I reckon well. I reckon South. Yeah, South's uh, got it done. And the special, special guest is tipping Parramatta. Okay. So All right, next game enough. we got. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next game we got <laughs> Cronulla and Titans. Look, for this one, I don't know why. I'm, I'm tipping Sharks, but I won't be surprised Titans win this. But I'll go Sharks. One, uh, one to twelve. Now, yeah, I, I reckon considering the way, you know, the last game finished for the Sharks, I reckon Sharks bounce back heavy. I say thirteen plus okay. Sharks. I'm um, going Sharks as well. I think. Yeah. yeah, I think they'll need to bounce back, and what a way to get Titans and get their win. Yeah, yeah, I think Sharks as well. Yeah, Sharks yeah me too. Win. One to twelve. I think Titans will put up a fight. Uh, yeah. they're inconsistent, but when they when they're at their best, they're actually they're good, a decent team. But I'm gonna go the Sharks. I think they'll bounce back. All right, next game we got Brisbane. Oh, what did Lockie? Lockie, go? Um, oh, Lockie oh, sorry. Lockie, sorry. So Shabot talking well. the mic. He's went Sharks as well. Mm. Okay, yeah. easy. All right, next game we got Brisbane versus Penrith. Grand final rematch. Grand final rematch. Um, yeah. Broncos down on troops. Panthers down on get, a big troop. Yeah, they'll get Dylan Edwards back this week. Yeah. And what about Jerome Law and? They'll, they'll all be back. Oh, they'll, they'll all, all be back. back yeah. So which is good. They need that. And yeah, that means Panthers win for me. One to twelve. I think Penrith as well. Yeah, yeah Penrith class. too strong. Penrith yeah. on to 12. Um, yeah, I'm going Panthers. Uh, Lockie, he's going Broncos, actually. Okay. For this yeah. one. And Emilio? I'm going Panthers. I think with their troops returning, coming off a loss as mm. well, they're going to be like Bouncing fired up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Next game, Anthony? Uh, next game, Saturday, 3 o'clock. Bulldogs, okay, Warriors. That's, how, who you that's got. how who you got. Okay. Um, score prediction, boys. I'll start off. Now, the last time R Warriors played at 3 o'clock, they got pumped 6 6 6. I'm going another thrashing for them. 3 o'clock Saturday, Bulldogs, 40 to 12. 40 to 12? Yeah. 40 to 12. I'm on that. Bold bold take, but I'm going 40 to 12. I'm so is, that, is that your bold take? Uh, no, that's not my bold take, but it okay. could be. Okay. But yeah, I think they get smashed. <laughs> I don't know why. I All think right. they get smashed again. Okay. Um, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Um, I'll say Bulldogs 32 20. We'll okay. Like 12 points difference. Okay. okay. Um, I went 20 to 12 Bulldogs. I'm going to go 28 6 Bulldogs. Okay. okay. Big win. Uh, oh, I think it's going to be close. I'm going 18 16. 18 16. I think it'll be a tough game. I feel they're a better team. I'm still late. shocked by Samuel's one. I mean, Warriors haven't been the best, but I think they haven't been the best, haven't. and we haven't been the best of recent yeah, yeah. attacking wise. But I don't know. Some I'm just going. I out feel lately they've been the better team without Johnson. Yeah, 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 yeah. He holds them back a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah, I, I'm going that. So um, any time now. Um, any time I'm going to go Critter, Stephen Crichton. Stephen Crichton, Bill. Um, um, Marcelo Montoya. Yeah, um, I'm going Matt Burden, Emilio. I'm going to go Jacob Preston. Preston, okay. yeah, he'll okay, be back I'm going uh, Wilson for okay, my yeah. anytime try First try scorer. scorer. Um, Chanel Harris Defeater from Warriors. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Harris Defeater, he's good, yeah. Bill. Um, I'm going Stephen Crowden. <laughs> um, I went Dallin Wateni Zelezniak first try. Emilio? I'm going to go Bronson Sherry. Okay, I'm yeah. Going <laughs> <laughs> oh, he won't score, bro. He won't score. Trust me, he won't score. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going uh, kick out. Kick out, okay. okay. Time, uh, man of the match. Uh, I'm going to go Karaz. Karaz? Jack Karaz, yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Man of the match, I'm going to uh, kick out. Kiko, Burden, Reed Money, Reed Money, yeah. yeah. I was, I was thinking thinking Reed Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going Matt Burden. Um, and finally, bold prediction, Anthony. Uh, Bulldogs to score two late tries to win the game. Okay, Anthony, uh, Bill. Uh, Money to get sent off. <laughs> sent off. Sent, sent off. off. Okay. Okay. He's well, gonna yeah. do something. He might, get, he might finally mm. click. Yeah, Shabal. Yeah. Um, well, actually. I'm going uh, Wilson Hattrick for Wilson this Hattrick? week. Wilson Hattrick. Um, okay. I'm gonna go Warriors to score the first two tries in ten minutes. First ten minutes. I'm going to go uh, Warriors penalty count to be double the Bulldogs. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's a different one. We've never done yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's a What are the, what are the league standings? What's the... Samuel's got the who you got. Oh. What we'll touch on tips, you mean? Yeah, the, who you nah, who you got? Oh, uh, Shabell's first. Um, Bill's second. I'm still here because, yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then me third, Anthony fourth. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, next, uh, let's finish off the round. All right, next one, we've got Tigers and Melbourne. I think Melbourne's going to win this one. A 13 plus game. Bro, like 96% of yeah. people think Storm are going to win and the 4% think Tigers are going to win. Yeah, you're I reckon that Storm. 4%. Hey? You're that 4%. No, no, no. Oh. You know, I, I, I sent it to you, yeah, but I'll I think I'm going to change okay, it. Okay, I'll fix it then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Storms to win. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Melbourne. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm gonna go Melbourne one to twelve because yeah. they okay. don't seem to win thirteen plus. Yeah, okay. Easy. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go Melbourne as well. Okay, last three games. Uh, the Cowboys round. and Manly. I'm Manly. gonna. Sti- oh. I don't know. That's tricky, bro. <laughs> I, I'm going to stick with Cowboys. They, Cowboys. they just won against yeah. Penrith, so they just got lucky, bro. Against Penrith. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Cowboys. Cowboys. Um, I'm going Manly one to twelve. I'm going Manly as well. And I forgot to mention the special guest. He said Melbourne for against Tigers, and he's also tipping Manly. Okay. okay. I'm tipping Manly one to twelve. Okay. I think Trevojevic returning. They're going to be like on yeah, a high, right. mm. and they'll get the job. Apparently, done. he's playing center too. Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, it's about time they change move. it. Yeah, yeah, good move. Um, last two games, uh, Roosters, uh, Roosters and Dragons. That's gonna be a good game. Yeah. I feel like. I think Dragons are gonna come back fine, bro. After the that loss against Roosters, the sixty sixty nil. <laughs> so now it was like sixty to eighteen. Uh, sixty something, something like, like sixty. They got like pumped. They pumped. Got pumped. Yeah. But I think that's gonna motivate them uh, for this week. I'm staying with Dragons, man. Okay. Dragons okay. are gonna win it. Uh, I'm gonna go Roosters. Yeah, I'm gonna Roosters. One, uh, I, th- I think one to twelve, man. I really think it's going to be a tight one. It'll be tight, yeah. I, I, like considering the, the only dra- thing I'm scared is that Roosters know how to score points. They so do. Like sometimes yeah. can it be one to twelve? My Dragons' defense has been alright. They're doing better. Yeah. Roosters' points difference is two hundred plus. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's outrageous. Uh, yeah, I'm, I think Roosters will get the win. Yeah, Roosters. Amelia. Yeah, I'm going Roosters one to twelve. I think it'll be tight. I, I, Dragons seem like they don't know how to win two in a row. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah, have yeah, a big win. Exactly. And the yeah, next yeah, week, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, have a shot. Pretty lucky go. Roosters. He's where our uh, roosters. Where roosters. Yeah. Okay, nice. Last game. The last game we got Raiders and Newcastle. Bro, this is a tough one. Four cent, a four cent difference on sports bit. Wow. Yeah, it's no, close. It's close. Four and a dollar ninety. Well, he yeah. knows that. Oh well. Oh, how do you know? He has on yeah. How do you know that, bro? Sure. Um, I'll go <laughs> Raiders. Multi man. Raiders at home. Uh, Raiders at home. Um, I'm gonna go Knights. Okay. Nice yeah, I'm gonna stick with Knights. Yeah. Knights. Uh, they've been playing very good. Uh, Raiders. Their record has been. Yeah. That his last few weeks, um, even when they're going back to their home game, like at Canberra Stadium, I don't think they're going to put a good performance. So I reckon mm. Newcastle is going to upset them. Yeah, yeah, I'm going uh, Knights as well. Last year they did get their win, and I'm just feeling another uh, Knights win. And I feel if Knights were to win again, win this game against Raiders, I feel they're going to build momentum for the next couple yeah. of weeks. Fair yeah, enough. I think this is the game of the round. I'm going to go the Raiders one to twelve. I'm going to say it's going to go to Golden Point. Okay, Golden Point. Another well. Golden Point. Well, okay, that's a wrap up to round eighteen tips. Uh, thanks, Lockie, for giving our giving us your tips. Thanks so much, man. Uh, for this week, uh, now, boys, uh, big news: Jared Hayne charges of job by the police. He's a free man now, and he's, he's the back. truth shall set you free. That's, that's it. it that's it. That's, that's it. it, man. Like after how long was it? How long will, did this case go so for? Since, uh, oh, the case since 20, 2019. 2019, Ooh. man. Poor bloke, man. Yeah, what man. It, it's the worst when... And people get accused very easily. And then and in that situation, he's always going to be at fault when he's not really, you know, if yeah. you know what I mean. And, like, thank God, you know, he's out, he's free, and, you know, he can just be with his family now. That's it, man. Like, it's um, long overdue, man. Like, I... They w- they're always going to pin the celebrity, the, yeah, exactly, the, yeah. the the bloke that's on TV. Mm. Always, man. They're always always these chicks are going to find a way to get you done, boy. Mm. Especially when you got status, man. And I'm so happy the justice system actually served justice this time, rightfully. Yeah. Because, man, wrong. like, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of wrongfully convicted people that are still in prison, bro. And yeah. it's it's sad to see that uh, just around the world, the justice system, how it's failed a lot of people. There's I'm even so like I'm so happy about, about this. True, true stories about people getting convicted into jail for Bro, no reason. There's people that that face the death penalty when yeah. they're hundred yeah. percent innocent. It's, uh, bad, it's, it's an it's an own Amelia, thing. what is your thought, like Jared Hayne? Yeah, I mean, how, how corrupt is it? So a a female comes out with a accusation with no evidence, brings it to the police, and then the police choose to defend her in yeah. court. The whole case mm. in so I was I was in the court. Oh, and were you? Yeah, I was oh, there, right. and the the police was her defense, not her own wow. lawyer. Wow. Wow. The police. So the whole time it was the police fighting against him. They wanted to make an example out of him. If it wasn't Jared Hayne, an NRL star, the case wouldn't have gone yeah. for that long. Further, yeah. Like he went in and out, and then back in, yeah. and the case yeah, yeah. just back and forth, like three trials. It was uh, going to be a fourth as well, but wow. it, it got cut. Thank God. So it did. Thank God. He yeah, because again, when you're a big star like that, and if it's a girl pointing at a boy. The girl's always going to be in favour. That's, what, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Is, is, is it because of the current climate of the world? Yeah. Just about is, like, yeah. just the, the, I don't want to get into politics, but like just the, the whole political side of things where, like, as you're saying, like, they're always going to side with the, yeah. with the female. You know, yeah. is, is, it, is it because of that? Is it, that why they def- you think they're defending? It, 100% it is. Like, and, and in the situation he was in, where the girl's claiming that um, he, he did it without consent or whatever, 
they're gonna always stick with the girl, no matter what. Mm. It's always the girl because, of course, the the male has more dominant yeah, dominance. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's th that that's all over. You know, he's free, and then it's it's good. But to what, what next now for Jared Hain? What do you reckon? I don't know. To be honest, he's probably gonna just chill. I reckon he's just living his life. Yeah, living that's his it, life, man. man. But like, it's it's hurt his brand. It's it's, it's would you say it's hurt his <coughs> reputation going forward, or like, it has uh, is this a taint on his name? Like, or is he free? Like, could he do anything in what? Like, obviously he's free, but he's always gonna have that image. Because a lot of people, a lot of celebrities, you know, go through this whole thing. Like, mm. for instance, um, Michael Jackson, a perfect example. The bloke, like, got proven innocent. Innocent on all charges, yeah. man. With the whole, um, what was the case again? With the, with, the, with the minors yeah, yeah, and whatever. Yeah, 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 that one. Um, so he got proven innocent, but it still tainted his brand. Yeah. Do you think going yeah. forward, it tainted his brand? Like, did, did, they, did they actually, like, did they stuff him up? That's what I'm trying it to say. It definitely does, but I, I don't think he cares that much anymore. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah. Point, if he's going to live the care. quiet life, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, look, he's in a, like he's done, he's retired, so. But like, in, not, not not NRL, like as in if he tries to, I don't know, open a brand, or maybe make a clothing brand or make a, I don't know, a podcast or something like look, that. Is that always going to be, you know, in his. Look, at my, but I guess time will tell. I yeah. reckon. I think you got to just see how it plays out, but yeah, hopefully it doesn't. Like he's, he's, he's innocent. I don't think it should, but, no, no, yeah, but exactly. people are always going to have that against yeah, him. Yeah, like. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. He, he's a free man, as we said. That's and yeah. it. I'm Jared Hain, man. Um, yeah. The Hain plane. Good to hear he's back. The yeah, Hain plane. The Hain plane, plane. Plane. plane flies <laughs> again. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, boys, next thing. Um, we spoke about the Bulldogs Cronulla game. Uh, Nico Hines, what has happened to him? You know, ever since the origin, he was poor and it's <coughs> sort of affected his gameplay and just, he, in particular, also his team around him. So, what do you think is the main reason to why Nico Hines is playing the way he is lately? Especially that field goal he missed. That, just, that defines everything. Bro, talk about kicking someone when they're down. When you kick someone when they're down, they're always gonna, they're not going to play their best footy or, yeah. or do their best. You know, that I think that origin really, really stuffed him up. I that just, origin performance, like mm. fir that first game. Because it wasn't after that he, he missed the kick, the conversion to win the game against, yeah. what was it, Dolphins? Dolphins, Dolphins yeah. So yeah. like that, and then, and then this game, like right in front of the yeah. sticks, it's I, like... I just feel, look, for me... Since he joined Sharks, I've always rated Hines. I think he's a good player. He's got talent, and what he like on his day, he's a very good halfback. I just feel sometimes he's scapegoated too much. I think the pressure is too much on him compared to any other players in the competition. After one look, State of Origin was a bad performance, and that game one was it was unacceptable. I just feel because of that sent off, I feel he was shifted a bit to the centers once again. Uh, you look at last year in game, was it game one? Yeah, game one. Yeah. When Turbo got injured and he had no other choice but to eventually later in the game to play center again. And I feel this is a similar situation for him. And of course, the, the pressure got to him. And of course, it was bad the way he missed that field goal against uh, Bulldogs and missing those conversion. I just feel things happen like that. Yes, he didn't cope under pressure well, but I just feel the NRL um, experts have to give this, this player a rest because they're giving him too much too much what's it called um criticism and sometimes a player can't take that much criticism every mm. single time yeah and yeah. the pressure's really on him and i think he's low on confidence and when you're low on confidence that's you know that's the worst because you can't play the way you want to play and it's showing on the field he, he he's just lost it completely and again i agree with Shabelle how he's getting criticism is you know allowed in the game but sometimes it might get too much yeah where it becomes unfair in a way because you're constantly digging at him, digging, digging at him. And then where does that leave him? Like he's trying to find his confidence back. And I think the only way he finds his confidence is slowly Sharks getting to win games because I think they've only won one in five or something. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they're, they're struggling right now. And as we all know, number seven is so crucial to a game. So if he's not playing good, then the Sharks aren't playing good. So he's got to really find his form and, you know, hopefully it starts to turn around for him because especially that origin, what happened, that's the biggest trigger to why he's playing. Yeah. playing what do you think, Emilio? I think you guys said everything I was <laughs> yeah, going to say. Yeah, yeah. But um, he, he's he's a fantastic player. I rate him a lot, but he's not a leader. Yeah. And I think the Sharks revolve around him too much and mm. it just makes him slip. 
And another thing with the with the criticism, obviously you can't help it. That, that's it. That's the game. That's a game. But people are the biggest hypocrites. Yeah. One week they'll say mental health, this and that, and the next week they'll be swearing <laughs> at a guy. Yeah. 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 Terrible. That's how it was like, 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 was it? Didn't you say? Just say shit, oh, hind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But that's a heat at the moment, man. It's you don't really hate him. But we said it last week. It won't go past those stands. What we say in those stands is just it's emotional. No, Emilio's right. As Emilio said, I think he's a good player. But again, at that moment, I'm just pissed off. I'm angry. Do you think he's <laughs> yeah. a, a player that should be shifted back to fullback? Because you look at Melbourne, he was outstanding, man. I know it's Melbourne and that was the prime days where Melbourne were making grand finals, but do you feel he's a better fullback then? No, than they need him in the halves, bro. Like on his best on his best day, like he can turn up. But uh, bro, they're kicking him while he's down. I'll say it again. They're kicking this bloke while he's down. You're not going to get the best out of someone if... If they are struggling, if, if they are struggling, you don't know what he, what he's doing at home. Like in terms of mental health, yeah. Like bro, like it's hard to play good footy, man, when you're not on your best game. And you think about it, like his mother's gone through a lot. And maybe yeah, exactly, that plays man. a lot, and then it's affected him during. But his just game. the fans and yeah, it's it's all hard the to other take, scrutiny. Yeah. It's, it's not easy. Imagine being on the spotlight like that, like you're in Origin, yeah. and, and, and yeah. Like, yeah. like think it's about it. Much. They were on such a good form, Sharks, during the start of the year, and after one two bad <laughs> games, everyone blames Hines yeah. and why they're playing. Same bad. as Latrell Mitchell. Yeah, Latrell Mitchell. On the same page, as but you can actually blame him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You can blame but him. But still, like, it's not always that one yeah, player. Yeah. It's a team yeah. effort at the end of the day. Yeah, can exactly. we get your thoughts? What, what do you think? Look, to be honest, bro, these last couple of weeks, his performance hasn't been the greatest. I know how you all said about mental health, and we've actually spoken about that a couple of weeks ago with Joey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mental health is, like, the biggest thing on yeah. planet Earth before footy and that, you know what I mean? Because, like, anything happens... Your life can go just like that. I'm just saying, like, yeah. something happens of criticism and people, like, chucking abusements and all yeah. that stuff. It's not good like that, you know? You just got to you, you fix yourself up, you know? After these last few weeks of that performance, wasn't wasn't the greatest for himself. Yeah. And he's actually put himself down. I reckon the solution teammates. is give him a break. I yeah. think rest so. him, like rest him, sure rest him, rest about, the bloke. How about putting him into New South Wales Cup just for a couple of weeks to yeah, fix, uh, adjust a few things? I up. think that makes it worse, but bro, he's still oh. playing footy. No, no, no. You, you I think just completely rest him. Like, don't but play. How it. long would you give him the rest? Bro, four weeks. I, two weeks? He, I think he needs a, a week, bro. A week, a two weeks, or just yeah. one game, bro. Just one week off. Let him rest. Let him just, you know, yeah. you know, st spend time with his family. Yeah, but whatever he wants to do, and yeah. then he comes back strong. But Trindle was playing very like he's playing yeah. good too. But who are you going to replace him for Nico Hines? Daniel if, Atkinson. Yeah, Daniel yeah, Atkinson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he stepped up a lot, man. Yeah, he's, he's actually gone good. better, and he's performing better too with his uh, attack and defense as well. Yeah. yeah. But like how you said about the break, I reckon give him a break. Yeah. yeah. At least a week or but, two, the maximum. But yeah, man, I think he'll bounce back, hopefully. Um, yeah, yeah uh, let's finally talk about Chad Townsend. He's been offered to play for the Bulldogs in 2025. Um, first of all, would you take him? Second of all, is this unfair to Sexton? Useless. I think it's yeah, unfair, man, because that's why I've mentioned this so many times, even last year. I don't get the problem with Bulldogs where we sign players every year and the year after they're off to another club. Aaron that's why I don't like Aaron yeah. Schaub, for example. Dufty, Paul Vaughan, I think. Dufty, I think, had good moments. Nah, during I would have got rid of him. I, I would have got rid of him. Connor Duffy. Trace, I'm so happy he's the full, yeah, but yeah. I feel Dufty again, why sign him just for six months and then Trial let him and go? Error. Trial and never. But error. it's just so yeah, dumb. Like, yeah, yeah. you need to build. Again, during that period, we are building to like it, look where we are now we we're building to make finals every week um every year and getting someone out just for six months and he wasn't even that bad dufty i think he had good games enough to stay for the rest of the year and maybe get another contract even paul vaughan i think he was a great addition to the the squad yeah, he was very good yeah. forward and i just don't understand it baffles me why every single time we're signing plays and then immediately the year after we're letting him letting him go i just i don't know it's but confusing about jake i've realized as well yeah, Jake but he, he stayed. I'm he saying stayed, plays we start, I'm saying yeah. plays we signed for one year and then the next year they're out. Yeah. Look at Hayes Perham. Yeah. One year we signed him, he's not even in the squad, he's in the New South Wales Cup. So that's what we need to fix this situation and keep these keep certain plays and just keep building on them. Yeah. And Sexton is a great player that we can build on for the next five to ten years. Yeah. yeah. Chad Townsend, he's a very good player. He's won a premiership and everywhere he goes, he controls that team, he leads that team. I think we're past that point where we need an experienced seven. Like we had Kieran Foran and yes, he was good, but he had a lot of injuries. Yeah. Chad Townsend is a different player to him. I feel he doesn't get injured a lot and he might offer something different. But I think we're in a good position now where Burden's playing good, Sexton's playing good. Their combination's starting to, you know, click together. So yeah. I don't think it's justified to sign Townsend for one year, 
drop sex in and that who knows what might that might do to his confidence to his playing uh, skills it might affect him big time yeah. and then when Townsend's gone Sexton's back in he might have lost everything so it's about building momentum with Bird and Sexton um if they sign him, I wouldn't be angry because I think he's a good player. But personally, for me, <coughs> keep Sexton and Bird and just, yeah, Townsend, he can go somewhere else. Yeah, I agree. Like, even with um, uh, Sexton, like how you said, he won the premiership as well with Sharks. You mean Townsend? Uh, uh, Chan Townsend, sorry, my apologies. Uh, yeah. No, he's won a premiership. I know he brings everything to the table. I know. Um, and plus, his defence attack is, like, not the greatest, but, like, it's just on the field, like 50 50 thing. Yeah, if, I can, yeah. Yeah. if I can say that. Um, no, you can't say yeah. that. <laughs> well, <it's> like, <laughs> no, you can't, you can't <laughs> say 50 50. It's, it's, it's a forbidden How word. can you say if you've already said it? Oh, anyway, yeah, said anyway. it. Anyway. Anyways, yeah. um, but if Bulldogs were going to give him a contract, <laughs> but they were saying that he could uh, just play for one year and retire. Yeah, because that's basically Because yeah. I, I reckon he's already like achieved everything yeah. in his career. Yeah. So, but like you said about, to uh, I mean, Toby Sexton, I personally rather leave Burden and Sexton together as a pair. And just go, like just keep going with it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serrato is actually building them up every single week of the game, but with Chad Townsend, I want to bring him in. Okay, that's what, what do you think, Emilio? Yeah, I I agree. He, I think it's a waste. Like obviously, there's no denying the the talent in Chad Townsend, but he's gonna stay for maximum two years. I think we should focus on building the young guns yeah. like, like Sexton, Burden and all that yeah. and especially the juniors yeah. that, that are coming through. We even got Bailey Hayward playing, exactly, yeah, yeah. playing the halves as well. And we've got Oluwapu in the bench. And all that, yeah. Oh, I'm actually very yeah. keen for Oluwapu yeah, to yeah. come back. But yeah, I think we should keep building the young guns and as as you said, we're not at that point anymore where we need that that experience. experience it, it, can it, it can always help. Like uh, yeah. we, you, you'll take experience, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, yeah, you're right. All you, all you boys are right. Like we're gonna win the premiership without it, exactly. regardless. You know, so what's the are. point? So what's the point? So yeah, what's the point of bringing it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Well, well, we got the sign there on the side, so yeah, that's we're it. gonna be lifting it up very soon. So. Yeah, that's Would you it. Be? hundred percent I will be. <laughs> if they um, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, boys, that's a wrap up to league talk, and uh, we'll move on to some uh, wrestle talk. All right, boys, now time for some wrestle talk. Uh, first of all, Paul Heyman, that segment on Friday Night Smackdown, which was crazy. For a second, I thought Roman was going to come out because he's being attacked by Solo. Wanted him to acknowledge him, but of course, Paul Heyman won't acknowledge him except his tribal chief, which is Roman Reigns. Um, but how did you see that segment? That's a sick segment. Yeah. Uh, that's the first time in a while I've seen Paul, Paul Heyman, Heyman take a bump. Like bro. that bump. Bro, yeah, that was a bump. bump. And, and he's, 50, he's, he's 53 years old, so like credit to him, bro. bro. Yeah. But what a, what a twist in the story. It's crazy. And like, I love how he's not shaved and he's yeah. dressed and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he had enough. See his yeah. eyes, how red they were. Like, like and he was quite, yeah, like yeah. he was full motion as well yeah, at the same time. Emotional, yeah. That, uh, it's, it's a great, it's, but I don't know, like, uh, do you think, it, like, do you think Reigns comes back at uh, uh, Money in the Bank or does he come well, later? I mean, we've I, talked about this many times, but, yeah. but like yeah. after that segment, like surely he comes back at Money yeah. in the Bank. Because, because they, they, they want to stretch this to some Yeah, because apparently he's coming earlier. Yeah. Expected, so you'd think it's money in the bank, yeah, but then it could be later. So, right now, I don't know when he'll return, but they need to bring him like very soon. Personally, for me, as I said, I think it should be money in the bank because, yeah, you don't want to Paul Heyman, be dragged no, long. think about it. Paul Heyman's gonna be back <coughs> for a while now, yeah, true, maybe so for a couple of weeks, so yeah. Maybe he comes back, and then I was reading a comment actually, someone goes. Paul Heyman should be up for like say a few weeks. He'll come back and say, My name's Paul Heyman, but then he goes, I haven't come alone. And mm. then Roman comes out. Yeah. But do you so think you it's know? better if. Yeah, true. Yeah, but I don't think it will, will generate a it bigger, like no, no, a bigger pop than Reigns just coming out. If yeah, Paul Heyman like is. Yeah. He won't be available for money in the bank. So I think that cancels out maybe Roman being there. I think Paul Heyman. Roman has to come back when Paul Heyman is there. I think it's a makes it a bit more better, especially what's happening with uh, Paul Heyman and the new bloodline with Solo yeah. and that. So it makes sense for Roman to return when Paul Heyman's there. But what I think might happen, I think they're just going to wait till SummerSlam. Mm. Is SummerSlam after Money in the Bank? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, right, it's yeah. after yeah. that. I it's think like SummerSlam will come. First of all, when he said, I don't acknowledge you as my tribal chief, that he spiked him and then I said okay surely someone's coming out Roman nothing happened mm, then when no. they lifted him up I said okay he's coming yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. happened so Jimmy might it be the one it wouldn't have worked the I, I yeah. don't know. why'd you expect him to come back at Smackdown I don't know because he's getting attacked and my first reaction was like Paul Heyman never gets hit Paul Heyman never gets attacked so I'm thinking surely he doesn't but yeah yeah he I get what you mean but attacked, not, not at a Smackdown I mean it was at Madison Square Garden so like York, yeah, yeah, yeah so like it was they're gonna generate big moments yeah but like yeah look 
Talking about Roman Reigns, do you think, again, we before, I think it was after WrestleMania where Triple H said we've got something massive for Roman Reigns and it's going to shock the entire WWE universe. Mm. Can he potentially be one of the best babyface in WWE no way. history? No way, man. But What's that question? But because they've got one of the best storylines coming for Roman Reigns. From what he was, he could he's going to be a babyface and he's going to be such a great babyface. A great babyface, but not the greatest of all time. But it depends what the storyline's going to be. There's no way, but why would you say the greatest? I know it's going to be a short time, but I just feel... But of all time what, what be, Triple H has said okay. has really probably excited fans. It's something okay. crazy. We just all right, say he has this Maybe great like baby face. Thing. Say he would had he would have this uh, great baby face run. Would you put him over Cena? Cena is the greatest oh, no. baby face. Cena's yeah, the greatest. Cena is, is yeah. out there. First it, of all. Again, it depends how <coughs> this is going to shape up and how good Triple H is. What he's saying is really good. You can't. Uh, you can say the greatest heel of all time. But I don't think you can really pinpoint the greatest a baby yeah. particular moment. Unless it's it's at a at, it's uh, like a long run like Cena's was. What, what about, about like if it's like three a great baby face stint, stint, if you know what I mean? You know, a just maybe a, just a great baby face. Yeah, like yeah. Hey, but <laughs> he won't it won't work because he's he's his shit as a baby face. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened like, in 2015 or that, that time? Yeah, yeah. Romans yeah when they had that run, big dog, I think Romans developed so much over the years. Yeah, and I think as a heel. As a hill, yeah. no, but I'm saying already fans are crying out and calling guys name. We want Roman, so baby face yeah. moment, maybe, maybe, gr maybe, yeah, okay, maybe yeah, greatest yeah. baby face turn, turn moment, turn yeah, moment, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what like, we could say. I feel Roman will still be the same, but the difference is the fans will be on his side. If you know, they what will I mean. be on his side, that's but, what I'm saying, but he'll still be the same Roman. Okay, but like you can't say someone's yeah, the greatest yeah. of all time. No, no, he won't be all time. Not all time. Yeah, like, that's how you word the question. But I'm saying. Oh, why I'm saying all time, I'm just saying it depends. I don't think he's going to stay here for like a couple months. I think it's going to be a pretty long, say a year and a bit, Roman will be in the company again. I just feel depending on what the storyline is, Triple H is really hyping this moment with Roman being the baby face and what they've got planned for him. That's what I'm saying. What he's got planned, it's going to be- one storyline, bro. It's and and story. not just that, goes, not man. just that. What Even with, reckon, look, with Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso, they're, they're going to be returning as well. I think probably this week, I'm not too sure, maybe Money in the Bank. He uh, hasn't came back. He hasn't been coming lately. Yeah, you reckon he comes back before Reigns? Yeah, I think yeah, nah, because I think they're gonna be um bef like building up the storyline for the Usos first before Reigns come mm. and then Paul Heyman comes in. So, so is do you reckon picture where Jimmy helps Jay win the money in the bank? Yeah, I think that maybe, oh, maybe. But I don't know. I don't know if Jimmy's gonna. Uh, I mean, Jay maybe forming that bloodline. Sorry to cut nah, you off, but maybe what is that? Maybe um he comes and helps him out, and then like say he helps him out. Jay wins. Um, now they're a tag team again, or like just together again, yeah. and then yeah, with but you don't want him to get with jealous. Reigns with Reigns coming back as babyface. Yeah. I think, that yeah, will I, form the, I think the there's going to be a tag team for Jane Jimmy again. You reckon? I think they'll yeah. be together yeah. soon. And they Roman, are. But if he wins the money in the if bank, he what's doesn't the point? win the money in the bank. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's yeah. what if I mean. Like, the what, what's the point of winning the money in the bank? You rather be yeah, yeah. If he doesn't win the money in the bank, I think they'll be. You rather give it to someone else, like for example, like who's in the money? You got LA Knight. You got LA Knight. You got Carmelo Hayes. You got Drew McIntyre. I reckon McIntyre might get his uh, his chance but to win. There's bound to you're be right, a CM Punk interference. Ma again, yeah. But you're right, but what about the, the question I asked? Like, do you think it'll be the greatest baby face of all time? Not yet. Not yet, to be honest. What, is he, what is he going to do? <sighs> bro, it, it's tricky, bro. After like building that storyline as a heel, and bro, and he's done a very good job, like exceptional. But now, like, if he's going to return as a baby face, I want to say the greatest baby face. Like how you said about Cena. Cena was the best. You can't top him. Exactly. The greatest. Cena's the yeah, GOAT. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he is actually the, the GOAT the of greatest baby, face. baby Look, put it this way. This is, I'll, I'll end your yeah. whole argument right now. The greatest <laughs> baby face is, um, say like in Cena's situation, yeah. it, you can't turn, uh, uh, how am I going to word this? Like, for instance, so John face. Cena, John Cena, yeah. John yeah. Cena is the greatest baby you face. We, uh, we yeah. can say he's one of, yeah. if I think he's the, the I greatest. Think he's the I think he's the greatest. there's always a conversation that you can never turn John Cena as a heel. That yeah. is the greatest baby face because yeah. Yeah. you well, can't, you're not able to turn a superstar yeah. into a heel. It's yeah. gonna be a situation. Yeah. But exactly. Roman Reigns, he can do heel and he can do baby face. He, he can do both. So if, yeah. he's, if he's baby face and people are sick of it, he can always go heel. heel yeah. exactly. But the greatest uh, but baby Cena. face is defined yeah. by, yeah. Like, by that question. Yeah, yeah, like because you can't turn yeah. that superstar. 100% because it suits him and he's built that foundation the last 25 years or 30 years of his career. Yeah. Um, not just inside the ring, but outside the ring as well. Cena, like he's, he does a lot of work projects and he does like- Make a wish. Make, make a, a wish foundation. He does everything for the kids and that. And he gives back. Yeah, that's why- But That's and, that's passion and babyface. I know that's babyface there, but that's passion for And back for to you. my point about yeah. what I just said. 
Yeah. Like Hulk Hogan when he went to yeah. uh, when he turned when he turned as a heel to NWA. I day. remember, yeah. But it, that broke. That broke. That like, broke. There wasn't internet at the time, but that broke television. Then I, I actually watched the whole NWA That's documentary. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's like it's not supposed to happen because Hogan was the biggest babyface back in the eighties, late eighties, seventies, yeah. and the nineties. But then when it came to, I remember it was WCW Bash at the Beach yeah. ninety seven, I think. That's when they formed the NWA, that, and it was a shock. Oh, I remember I watched that as a four year old kid. On the old TV, you remember those old yeah, TVs yeah, yeah, yeah. when they had the, like the tapes and all that stuff. Yeah, no. WCW came up on the screen when I saw that moment happen when Macho Man got bloody leg drop by Hogan. I started crying. Yeah, I'm not see, gonna see. lie. See, I see, like that, see, that, that type of moments. Like, that's that what you remember for the rest you, you of your life. You yeah. won't. You won't expect that from Hulk Hogan. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but people people take it from the heart as well, especially yeah. with kids. Like they'll they'll cry immediately, yeah. and even like with Are adults, you you'll still take it to heart. No, nah, not really, man. <laughs> not really. You know what? One, I won't lie. As soon as when uh, Undertaker retired, it, it actually oh, hit me 100%. hard. That, that got me hard. Yeah. 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 Well, look, talking about yeah. heels and faces, is it the right time for Randy to become heel? Because so, turn heel. SmackDown, yes. Cody Rhodes. Another hint. He goes, "Oh, I should be defending my belt." It was a close up on Cody, Randy in the background, and Randy just slowly looked. That was like, um, which event was it? Clash of the Castle. No, 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 it was Smackdown. Smackdown as well, and Clash, Clash of the Castle. Oh, yeah, there was when, he was there when Cody was holding the, yeah, belt, he tapped the belt, and Randy Orton looked at the belt, I'm like, there's something oh, coming I up. I believe too, if man. this was a, this was to happen, and yeah. I think it will, I think Randy does take the belt. I hope he does. I, I think yeah. he needs the winner. He hasn't won it for lately. Uh, like, I'm, try I'm just trying to think about it. good to see Randy in the belt. It will be great, but like, I'm just trying to think about it. Like, what? What does that do for his career? Do you think they do face versus face, Randy face? Because no, nah, I don't nah, think it won't work. work. It won't work. Nah, it does, no it doesn't work, work out. I reckon you put Randy Orton as a heel and you put Cody Rhodes I reckon, as a face. I reckon it's gonna happen at Money in the Bank. No, nah, I think it's at yeah, SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's gonna happen happened. like when he targets him, and then after that, like Money in the Bank. Oh, oh, yeah, to SummerSlam. Um, like imagine everyone booing Randy again. Uh, you know what? I love I love, I love Orton as you. We've raised this question. I yeah, did it with the Rock. His, his, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I just I know like we had a we we've had this debate so many times. Yeah. But now I'm thinking about it. Can we? We see Randy Hill again. Yes, I, I love yes, him. Bro. I love well, Randy as you. To attach to Randy as a, a baby face bro, now. again. The Rock. There's yeah. no way that that like, guy like should have turned um, yeah. heel, but he did. Because yeah. we haven't and seen he, yeah. we haven't seen Randy as a babyface in years. So heel, you mean? Uh, oh, no, sorry. no. The last as time, a heel, as a heel? No, the last time as a heel was at 2020 with Edge. Remember the storyline, the COVID season? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. Well, he when was. he um, grabbed the yeah. chair and hit Edge on the yeah. Yeah. on the head. Yeah, he turned. He turned, he, back he turned back into the legend killer that, around that that's time. That's right. Yeah. So I think he will bring it back the legend killer. So, yeah. and that's when Cody Rhodes said on SmackDown when him and Kevin Owens were in the same ring, how they're saying like they're targeting the bloodline. Yeah, yeah. He said, uh, "The legend killer." When I when I heard that, I'm like, I know what Randy Orton's gonna how do. Mad. I how think Randy Orton's gonna switch, and he's gonna he's gonna bring back the old character back in 08 and on. You know when he used to go crazy? the bold, the bold. When he goes nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon they, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's I reckon, what I reckon that, that's that gonna happen. Kicked uh, Vince the, McMahon. Oh, I hope he does it. Imagine he does. <laughs> I reckon he should bring that back. I think he, he will bring it back. He's done it to Triple H. I reckon they and Stephanie McMahon. I reckon he win. They so Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens will win their <laughs> match. Yeah, yeah. They'll lift their hands and Randy Orton just backstabs him and RKO. Yes. Yeah, I think that's gonna happen. That's the only way they can do it because I don't think. If they lose, I think it'd be better if they win and he backs he betrays him. And I yeah. think to make it better, he might attack Kevin Owens as well. Yeah, nah, there's no so, point because they're not yeah, best mates. I know mates. there's no point, but yeah, Baldy, I know he just nah, he'll attack Cody and then Kevin Owens like what the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'll walk off and they won't be yeah. partners yeah. anymore. Look, finally, um, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory now. Um, Grayson Waller is showing the WWE Universe and Austin Theory. Well, Austin Theory still hasn't seen it yet, but that. He's doing all this for himself. The title, yeah. He just wants a title for himself. And the only reason why he's with Grace Waller is because of those tag team titles. So, again, this is another end. Austin Theory surely soon will, you know, break titles. We think they lose the belt and they'll form a rivalry between each other. And Austin Theory becomes face. Um, yeah, face. Yeah, but face, yeah. 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 Uh, I think he's due a face. I think he needs to change a bit. Maybe yeah. there's a bit of a change. Yeah. But could, um, th could this help Austin Theory? Maybe. It, it could help. To like him. Yeah, but because you saw Johnny Gargano, what he said. Yeah, go. Johnny Gargano, oh, sorry, bro, I don't no, want to no, cut you no. out. But Johnny Gargano even said, he's like, he's not for you. Like, he, he's just only using you for the title and that yeah. and, and becoming a champion. But Austin Theory has a bright future in front of him. You know, he, if he becomes face, I think that will not lead really, him. Not really, bro. Like, look, it doesn't suit him, but as a heel, it does suit him. You know I what I mean? I think he's better as a heel. It's like both ways, yeah, bro. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be like, 
similar to John Cena when he was a heel first and then he became a baby. John up. Cena? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, because yeah. he was yeah, a heel he was as a thugonomics, thugonomics back yeah. in the days. Yeah. Um, Look, a face could do him wonders. It yeah. might change the way everyone sees him. He yeah. might just become a Maybe new Maybe be less, less cringy. Less cringy. He, might, he just might have a better chance to succeed because, again, we look at Dominic, his face wasn't working with his father and I was watching a documentary, I don't know what it was, but Rey Mysterio and Edge... Um, in particular, Edge, they were worried about how... Oh, it was Triple H, someone. They were worried about how they're going to get him to not be seen as Rey Mysterio's dad. And he's turned heel and it's been the biggest, the greatest and biggest change for him because it's really yeah. helped him develop. And he's the, the biggest heel right now in WWE. Yeah, right. I, actually, yeah. I actually like Austin Theory. I think he's a good wrestler. And although his promos and his um, promo is a bit cringy, I think he can develop... Uh, again, great example about Dominic Mysterio. Who, who ever, who would have thought that from a babyface to becoming one of the greatest heels mm. in yeah, the last yeah. two years? So anything can happen, but it's so important they get the storyline right with um, Austin Theory if they want to yeah. really develop yeah. him into a great superstar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah well, anyways, that's a wrap up to Wrestle Talk Money. The bake is this week. Um, quickly, who's winning the money in bake? Quick, t- like, uh, who do you reckon? We've got tricky. Jay Uso, LA Knight, Carmelo Hayes, Drew McIntyre, and it's gonna be it's gonna be more. Jay Uso. It has to, bro. Well, last year, quickly, last but, year. Or that or Camelo uh, Hayes. The only I reason like why him, I yeah, fear Jey Uso not winning it because yeah. last year, everyone thought LA Knight's win again. He deserved it and it didn't happen. So it could be another situation for Jay. But I think it's time. I, I'm going Jay. Uh, I, I want Jay too. Um, but I wouldn't mind Carmelo winning it. Carmelo Hayes. Yeah. I think that would be a very it, good it be, it, But you think too much? Uh, did we raise this question too much too soon? For Kamala, yeah, yeah, maybe he just maybe. came, so maybe, or maybe yeah. this could help his career. Yeah, but I feel there's maybe other wrestlers that have deserve been it. deserved. I reckon, I reckon it's it's Uso. It has it's to be Jay. Jay. Gable or Gable. Nah. Oh, and Gable's Gable. Gable's nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, Wyatt. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. yeah. It's yeah. gonna be Uso. It has to be Jay. If Jay, if Jay doesn't win it, he's done. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he's done. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, anyways, wrap up to Wrestle Talk and time for some football talk. That's astonishing. All right, time for some football talk now. Euros are. Round of 16 has officially begun the knockout stages. And first of all, Germany qualify, Switzerland qualify, England and Spain have qualified, meaning Germany will face Spain, Switzerland will face England. So out of those games so far, who wins? So should we talk about the games quickly or what? Yeah, well, so it's quick, Germany are uh, against uh, Denmark. Denmark. I think first 20 minutes of Germany were in control. Uh, Denmark started to come into the games. Both teams had disallowed goals, and rightfully so, that, so they weren't goals. Uh, and then Germany immediately, once Denmark got that disallowed goal, they just clicked, and that changed the whole game. <coughs> that did ch- <coughs> that did change the whole game. Uh, what was the first goal? It was the handball. It was the penalty, penalty from Kai Havertz, and, and then Musiala. Uh, yeah, exactly. He scored. So again, a dominant performance from Germany, uh, especially after that poor one against Switzerland. And we mentioned it before last week that. It's just because we've already qualified and the players are probably weren't taking the game too seriously. But yeah, it's a great performance from um, Germany, Denmark. They did try. They did um, had a, have a few moments. That Ericsson did perform a great. Uh, I think a great tournament for him for Denmark. He, Hoyland was a bit of a dis- disappointment. Um, expected more from him. I don't think he did score a goal in the Euros. But yeah, Germany overall good and Denmark, yeah, they're out of the US. Yeah. Christian Eriksen was fantastic. The way he passed the ball, the, the the timing of the passes. There was one where he quickly done a one-touch pass. It was a through ball. And then Denmark could have scored. They almost scored, but um, they didn't. Um, that disallowed goal for Switzerland, uh, Denmark was the biggest game changer. If Denmark scored that, scored that and it's allowed, that changes the whole mood of the game. And it puts Germany, I feel like, on the brink of an exit. But... We controlled the majority of the game. Denmark were hard to break because they're, they're, they're well-structured. Um, after their poor World Cup um, in 2022, they've, they've improved from that um, poor display. And yeah, Germany were always going to win it. I thought we always looked like we were going to win it. We, we looked a bit more threatening on our attacks. We could have scored five goals. You know, Fulkrug missed the one-on-one chance. Havertz missed two big chances. Yeah. So it could have been, like, been like five Havertz more. isn't really... He look. He does play striker, but he's not a clinical striker. And if it was it was a um, f- I can't pronounce Fulcrum. that. Yeah, if it was him, I think he would have buried those chances. But even he did miss a chance when he came on. But yeah, we, which is a concern, man. Because w- now let's we move on to Spain. Now, if we don't finish our chances, you know it's going to affect us. And 
we got to remember Spain when they versed Italy, they did miss a few of their chances. Danarama also had some big saves. So I think we're versing two teams here where well, they're, they're the most, most, goals, uh, yeah. most goals. Germany 10, Spain 9. But again, these teams are um, got the ability to miss some big chances. So it, it's about who's going to take those chances come Saturday, which is at 2 a.m. Because um, Australian you time. You look at Spain... Anelka Williams, fantastic tournament so far. Fabian Ruiz. 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 That's how you pronounce it. Rodri was Yeah, he's been good. good. Rodri's been pretty Georgia. decent. Defence, they've kept three clean sheets during their group stage. So Spain, I'm a bit worried about. I think they're a great team. Uh, previously in the World Cup, I said it last week, where they've been getting knocked out way too early, round 16. And I think it was group stage one mm. at one point. So yeah, Spain is going to be a really big task. Georgia did put a good fight. But yeah, if I was to predict the winner, Germany and Spain... I do think it's going to go extra time. I feel it's going to go penalties, maybe. Yeah, that's. I think extra time. I think it'll be like a 1-1 one, one during the f full 90 minutes. Extra time, I think no one scores and then it'll go to penalties. Well, in the World Cup 2022, we did verse them in the group stage. Uh, Spain were leading 1-0, then full crew got the equaliser 1-1. Yeah, one, one, one. Um, and again, we face the Euro quarterfinals. Of course, I'm hoping Germany win. I think I it's going for Spain. I think it's going. I'm fearful for Spain because they're a good we team. We can get knocked out. You got, Germany and Spain have been probably the best teams of the tournament by far, so far. Man, by far. Then you got France and Portugal. I feel. I just think behind France it. haven't been exceptional. Even who who did you say? Portugal. Portugal. They haven't been pretty. Um, they haven't been pretty. Um, what's it called? Yeah. So that's why performing well. Germany and Spain have been the favorite. So I feel. Whoever wins this could go. And I win think the whole they'll thing. win it. But yeah, I'm going Germany to win on penalties. Now let's talk about England. They. Well, again, a very Terrible. poor performance. It just shows how bad their, not, well, not their squad. They've got a fantastic squad, but their performances in the Euro so far have been so bad, dreadful, boring, slow, and it just starts to uh, question why is Southgate still the, the still the manager? And there was a period where you guys, United, were linked to him, and then England fans were saying, "Oh, yeah, let him go, go to United." But then the United fans saying, "No, let him stay England." It just shows. Why this coach is so bad and no one likes him. He's an awful coach. His tactics are, are not to the standard of the elite managers. And it just shows bringing Ivan Tony 30 seconds, a minute left to go. And even Tony had a bit of a disagreement with him before coming on, saying, Why are you bringing me on now? For like and 60 seconds. Luckily, he played 30 minutes. So it just, he's not a manager. And I think if England really want to win any big trophies, World Cup, Euros, they need to sack this coach immediately. Yeah. Look, Bellingham, apart from that goal, he was dreadful. Everyone was bad. Kane was dreadful. I feel this was the one game where I, f I, I failed to see who was bringing the excitement to the team, who was more threatening. Um, Palmer Foden came in. scored two. Disallowed. Foden, yeah, was disallowed. He was offside. Um, and someone also, hit the, I think Kane hit the post. It was Rice. It was Rice yeah, at the yeah. post, sorry. I think when Palmer came on, there was a bit of, you know, threat from England. He 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 done good. Saka went to left back. Um Ian Wright was had his comments about that. Um, in which, you know, brought him to left back because if it wasn't for Ian Wright, Southgate would have not put him there, which which shows <coughs> Southgate's, you know, lack of knowledge about the game. Yeah. Because if you're listening to pundits view on the game saying, you know, it will be a good idea to Pull Saka left back because it releases and gives Palmer a chance on a right. Can you listen to that? Palmer didn't do well, and that's why I think Saka eventually went back to his position. Mm. So that didn't work out. But if you look at, I think their best player this year in the Euros has to be that centre back from England. Um, uh, Gray. Gray, yeah. Gray, I yeah. think he's been outstanding. He's been good. And a few clubs are interesting, interested in him, especially Arsenal. But I d again, I feel we need to build our bench Arsenal, but I feel United, a club should be buying him. Yeah, he's he's been outstanding and it just shows for centre-back to be their best player in the tournament speaks how bad England have been. And he, he got an assist, of course, for the Bellingham yeah. goal. So he's been the best performer. I think he's performer. been so good. The defence has been, They've kept you could cheats. say, the, the positive for England. They've only kept... But I feel... Conceded one every... They've only conceded one... So they've conceded three out of four games, yeah, which so is very good. Their defense has been the light of their tournament, but yeah, they first they take on Switzerland, who Who's Switzerland wins? are a good team. I'm going with Switzerland. I, I, Look, I think Switzerland. Jack has been performing, great defensive team. Uh, them beating Italy, 
like very professional win. It wasn't like a lucky win. It was a very controlled, dominant performance in Switzerland. And I've always rated them, even last World Cup, making it, I think it was quarterfinals. Not sure, but I think all day they beat England. Look, Switzerland are favourites, of course, heading into this. England are underdogs, which might benefit them. As much as I feel everyone's going to be saying Switzerland, I just don't know what I've been saying. I feel this is a year England might actually win it. Despite not being good, they've got an easy run. Switzerland, not saying Switzerland's easy, they're a very good team. Germany got a late equaliser against them. But again, it's when you expect England to win it, they're not winning it. But when you don't expect them, they're going to win it. I just think England win this one. I don't know why. So yeah, I'm going England to I'm win going this. Switzerland. Finally, uh, does Donnarumma deserve more after Italy's exit? You know, big saves. He's been putting big saves for Italy. Such a great goalkeeper. You know, one of the Euros when he was saving the penalties in 2020. And Italy are out, which is a shock exit. They've been very poor, dreadful. It's not the Italian football, you know. But again, he's did his part. He's saved so many shots, but his attack let him down. So does he deserve more? Does he deserve at least, you know, to have reached, you know, the semi-final? Does he deserve more he, praise? His team let, let him down by far, like, his performances, he's been the best keeper, I think, in the tournament so yeah. far. The saves he's been making, keeping Italy in games where they should have even, they would have been getting smashed 3 4 0. And they would have not made out of Made the it this stage. far. I just feel Italy, are again, in the period, were, I think before they won the Euros, they were in a bad period where they didn't make the World Cup in 2018. Uh, they didn't make the World Cup in 2022. 40. 2022, the sorry, recent yeah, World sorry, Cup. Yeah, yeah. So they've been in a bad period and winning the Euros has done them wonders. But again, I feel Italy are back in sta back to their old souls. It's, it's and like I feel they're going to struggle to make another World Cup, etc., etc. Yeah, it's like Germany. We were in that bad patch after that 2016 Euro. That was the last good time. Then the 2018 um, World Cup was poor. 2020 Euro was a bit better. World Cup 2022 was bad. And then we're here, we're doing good. So Italy, again, it's about progress, um, rebuilding, getting the right players into the squad. And then you, you we'll see where it takes them. He's, he's a good keeper and... Just if they've had a better um Attack. I think their defense have been very poor. They've got good defensive players which have not really performed to what they've been doing in their in their leagues. Yeah. Um and even he plays for PhD. I think he deserves a good look, PhD are a good team. They're gonna always win trophies, but I think he should be moving to another club. Look, there's yeah, club should be looking at him. For me, if Anana has another bad year, you get him. I'd actually get Donnarumma because he's a he's very so good guy. Go. I, I actually uh, he's still young. I think he's in a good age. 24. Yeah, he's a very young still keeper. Good. So and yeah, yeah, a lot of keepers have been good. Noya has been good. Um, Noya's been acceptable. He's been That's very like good. back to the old Noya. Like he ended the season at Bayern pretty poorly, but yeah, this and year he's qu been outstanding. And it raised questions: Should he get selected? But he's proving his doubt yeah, he is that he should be selected. Um, but yeah, football talk done. Combat talk next. All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Combat Talk. Boys, UFC 303 on the weekend. Um, let's get straight into it. Our main card, we'll, do, we'll, we'll go through the main card. We'll uh, review the main card. Yeah. Uh, Ian Gary, Michael Page. Ian Gary gets it done in round three. Unanimous decision. Yeah. What's your opinions on that fight, boys? Look, first of all, like Michael Page was first round, like he was doing like that karate style, right? Yeah, like he's, he un he's unorthodox. Like unorthodox yeah, style. Yeah. Like he was doing really good, but then Ian, Ian uh, Gary like controlled him, took him down. With takedowns and all that yeah. stuff, um, but when it came to round three, he was on top of Michael Page, and his head was like all over, and he was trying to punch like yeah. on the way back. You think it was a rightful decision, boys? Like, do you think it was Ian Gary win, or did uh, MVP get robbed? Yeah, I think Ian Gary won. Like, yeah. uh, it, yeah. it was nothing special by him. I don't think he can compete on on the high end of the division. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, I, I, it wasn't a clear win, but like I think he he, he just got it. For me, it was a clear win. Like I, a lot of people were saying he got robbed MVP, but for me, like look, man, you got to look at that ground uh, ground control time. Um, he was bro, he beat him like. In all avenues in wrestling. All right, look, round two, you give it to MVP. Yeah. Give him like a nice overhand right and, and a, a nice stiff jab that like like sent Ian Gary's head back. Yeah. You give round two to MVP from the striking game. And even just round one and three, like he smashed it on the striking game. 
um, mm. department. But then when Ian Gary got a hold of his legs, it was game over. That's, yeah. what, that's what really won the fight. So I don't know why yeah. people are saying he got robbed. Yeah. It was a clear win for Ian Gary. No, nah, but it was good, like, on the floor as well because his uh, control time was 7 minutes and 29 yeah, seconds. what? what was it? What was no, it? 7 minutes and 29 seconds. Oh, was the fight. Yeah, what was, yeah, what was Ian Gary? Oh, sorry, MVPs? Uh, MVP was only a minute. Yeah, see, there seconds. you go. See, that, that's why, that's why like, fighters like Habib, Islam Akhtar, yeah. these Dagestani fighters, you know, um, all these these types of wrestlers, that's why they win fights because of the wrestling. Yeah. And now now this Irish man, you know, not a lot of Irish people, you know, have that wrestling department of his, of their game. That's right, yeah. But he trains with uh, the Brazilians now and yeah, they're, he, they're he known for- training the, with Charles Oliveira. They're known for yeah. their BJJ. So now he's like a wrestler. Yeah, he's like an yeah. Irish wrestler now. It's weird, man. It's weird, Yeah. yeah. But, um, but he was good on the floor, don't get me wrong. But um, even when he was controlling his legs, like when he was uh, locking it in with Michael Page, like Michael Page couldn't even get out. He, even got, he almost got him in the rear naked choke. Yeah, like, uh, there was a few attempts that he was the trying to put round. In, the, in the rear naked choke, yeah, but yeah. it didn't work out for him. Yeah. Um, but the third round, like I said, he was on top of Michael Page and it was like in the most uncomfortable yeah. position. Shook Joe Rogan said like that was the weirdest comfortable, uncomfortable position of all time. Like, yeah. that, that's weird, never seen that before. Yeah. Um, but honestly, and I don't know if you heard what Ian Gary said at the press conference. He's like, "I'll be the probably the next guy in the next ten years." Who knows, bro? Well, not yet, not at the level yet. But if you win the championship and you defend like later on, he's got he's, he's, okay, he's got striking. He's got the wrestling he part does of his have game. Everything, I mean, but not he's the striking. Go, yeah. yeah, he's striking. Yeah. His striking can improve, but his wrestling right now is is what it, is why he's winning fights. Yeah, and I think I, he needs to improve on his defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Game, yeah, a lot. especially he puts his hands down a lot. Well, especially in round two, his defensive wasn't the best. Yeah, yeah Michael yeah. Page had him round two. Yeah, but um, yeah. And, and any more pointers, boys? No, no. Like no. The, the fight was just yeah, like it was. Yeah, it was right. a mere fight. It was yeah. a good, a good first fight on that main card. I wasn't, I wasn't sad about it. Yeah. I, I would take a UD win. But um, moving on, uh, Bueno Silva versus uh, Macy Chason, Chason, Chason. Yeah. Chason. Um, yeah. yeah, so that that was a bit controversial. You know, it ends in round two via doctor stoppage. Uh, bueno Silva, um, you know, gets cut open. Yeah. Um, look, man, what are your opinions about that fight, boys? Look, for, uh, it was a good fight in the first round. Like there was a lot of strikes in that. Um, even the takedown as well, but then round two, as soon as um, uh, Macy Chasson, when she put the elbow shot on Muno Silva on her face, that's when the deep cut came in. And I told you on Snapchat, like I reckon she lost at least a kilo and a bit of blood. <laughs> Literally, it was dripping out, out of her head on the side, <laughs> on the, the floor, and you had to see the whole yeah. bunch of blood on the floor. It was a nasty cut. It was a bad cut. I think that, that was the worst cut of all time. And when the doctor came in, he said because when um, uh, Macy, when she um, elbowed her on the face. It wasn't an elbow, it was like Like that. an elbow like shot, a yeah, like it was a yeah, slice. something like that. <laughs> as soon as she hit her right here on the face, yeah. it's like close to the eyebrow and the eye. So it's like probably connected. Yeah, uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna give a hell for the fights going forward, man. That's, a, that's always gonna be an issue. Yeah, but you, that you, was uh, the worst cut I've ever yeah. seen. What do you think, Camilo, about that fight? I actually didn't watch that fight. You didn't watch it, yeah, fair I enough. From but you saw the cut, didn't you? Yeah, I saw yeah. it. I started from then Ege, yeah. and then I went back and watched it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. It. it was it was a pretty snooze, it was a snooze fest, to be honest. Yeah. Like, Buena Silva, she started off strong, man. Yeah, um, she she closed the distance. She was landing big shots, man. I don't know what the stat was, but a lot, like she she smashed the she smashed the significant strike statistic. Um, I, I don't know what it was. No, uh, uh, so Macy had fifty and uh, Bruno but, Silva had forty six. Yeah, but like she smashed it early, early, early on in the fight. Yeah, um, for round again, one, closing think, that yeah. distance, striking very well, leg kicks, um, and, and 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 all that. But I felt like before she, the doctor came in and stopped the fight, um. I feel like she, she started to lack off a bit. Uh, she's, uh, we saw the usual hands behind her head on the ground waiting for her. And then she jumped on top of her and Macy jumped on top of her. And then, you yeah. know, whatever happened, happened. So I felt like if that if that fight had gone three rounds or gone the distance, I reckon Macy would have gone the win, got the win regardless. Well, well, technically, either way, she won the fight. So, yeah. um, but May, uh, Bruno Silva, like, she was actually saying, like, boo, like, they, they wanted the fight to continue. Yeah. But, but you can't do that because you got a big cut. How are you going to continue the fight? Yeah. It's like the worst cut of all time. Now let's and talk about great, yeah. let's talk about this news first. Oh, I didn't like this. Uh, yeah, I didn't like this either. Anthony oh. Smith versus Roman Delodze. What did, you think? Georgia, uh, what did you think I, about this fight? I'm gonna look. I said it to my mate yesterday. I think that was the worst fight. It was a boring fight. <laughs> but Roman had a lot of strikes in him. Like I think it was dominating. Smith. Dominated. Smith was just lazy. He didn't know what to do. He didn't and, know. And put the put it this way, man. He had a shorter notice fight than Anthony Smith did, and his yeah. his cardio the, his cardio still held up better than Smith. So 100%. it was crazy to see. So he smashed him all over the park, all over the the octagon. He actually did. Like 
Look, look at the record. 100 significant strikes over Anthony Smith, 51. Yeah, man. That and, was... and total strikes, 103 over 51 yeah. for Anthony Smith. I said to my mate, Anthony Smith, bro, he's not doing anything. Like I know he has a pretty good record, but he hasn't been fighting the best he lately. But he's he's just lazy. lazy. He's, but just he's, lazy. he's a veteran in the game. No, yeah. he's he, a he veteran. Jo John Jones. Yeah, but like he's, he's he's been in it for a while. But like, look, this card was a was a. A lot of fights got cancelled. A lot of uh, yeah, fighters pulled out. So, yeah. like, look, man, you can you can blame the short notice for uh, short notice call up. Yeah. But look, but you, but considering this this next fighter, man, like it, it puts that fight to shame. Considering Anthony Smith and Roman Delatte. Yeah, that, I know who you're gonna talk. Straight. I know. This, you, this yeah. fight was a great fight. That, I, loved it. I actually enjoyed this fight. Um, Dan um, Ike versus Diego Lopez in the co main. Diego Let's Lopez. Let's talk about this one, boys. Hey, Emilio, want to start go off? Go for Emilio. Yeah, Dan Ige, man, what? Hey, oh, what, what a machine, man. It's, it's a shame he, he got the loss in the end, but like to He really got in, the win. I, I reckon he got like, like, in, yeah, in, like the, he got the fans behind him. Yeah, now. in the people's eyes he got the win. Yeah. But to step like the bloke's getting a massage, like ah oh, relax. Yeah, it's yeah. a call up, they know what, can you fight tonight? Like, <laughs> Four yeah. hours before Four hours notice, <laughs> but Bro, this bloke was probably planning to watch the UFC 303 like yeah. with his mates or whatever. Yeah. Just watch it with the, the boys. Hotel, no, yeah. He didn't expect to be, you know, fighting on that card, man. That, that, that's, that's, and, that's, and it was a catchweight. Uh, the uh, catchweight catch fight, yeah. But um, that just, that's just a testament to his character, man. We, we like yeah. to talk about that Vox meme. Yeah. You know, if someone pulls out Vox coming in, wherever he is. But he's yeah. the true embodiment of that meme. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? But like, yeah. you know, like even, even Dana White gave that fight a lot of praise. Like he saved that fight. He actually um, did. But let's talk about Diego Lopez. Now, like... Bro, this guy went through three weight cuts, one forty-five, and then one fifty. They they um they changed the division the the division of the fight with uh, Brian Ortega because yeah, he pulls yeah. out before he pulled out. Um, that went up to lightweight, and then he had to cut again or like for the, for this fight for the catchweight belt. Mm. So like that's a true testament to his character. What a soldier Diego Lopez yeah. is, man. Yeah. You know, to even just still willing. Just to still take these fights. Yeah. Any fighter would have been like, nah, I'm not fighting anymore. I prepared for um, Brian Ortega and that's it. But this yeah. guy's like, all right, give it, yeah. give him to me. Let, yeah, let me fight that. him. Like when people, when people take the um, fights on short notice, they forget about the other fighter. Exactly. Like they've been preparing right, yeah. for a specific fighter and yeah. they get a different one. They yeah. forget that like that's ballsy from that Bro, guy Exactly. Well. He was preparing for like a, a wrestler. And then he got Dan Iger, striker, Ben. Yeah. Like, like, what about the fight itself, boys? What did you think about it? Look, round one, oh my God, Diego Lopez, his striking was so good, man. His uh, combination with his boxing skills is just too good. Like, you can't touch him, bro. Um, but I've got to give good credit to Dan Ige. Like, he actually defend, like, round one, round yeah, two, yeah. but it didn't go his way either way. Yeah. But his strikes for Diego Lopez hit another roof, bro. And every round, round two as well. Like, he was... Uh, there was a few things that he got clicked. Oh, you were, what about the roundhouse kick from uh, Dan Oig? Yeah, yeah. When he grabbed him by the leg and then charged yes, him down. Yes, And then he took him down, started taking him down with the, the grappling and all that stuff. But then Dan Oig was good in his defense yeah. on the takedown. He was trying to find ways to get out, but he couldn't. But he still kept like, hitting but the... That's, yeah, let's talk about Diego Lopez, but yeah. like Diego Lopez, man, like, again, like he didn't, he wasn't prepared for Dan Ige. Yeah. Got his takedowns. You know, this is his first time he went to a decision. You know, he debuted last yeah. year. First time he went to a decision. First time he really went past the round, round one because all his finishes had been in round one, the that's first right. minute. But, so, but don't forget his last fight, Diego Lopez lost, um, I think, the last year. In no, May. He didn't, no, he didn't. Yeah, lose. he did, no, actually. He didn't, no. He actually did. Diggle, he, no, he he hasn't, no, he hasn't, bro. But they had it on the UFC. He, bro, Diggle, he didn't he, lose. He, he, he was, had, his no, last he, fight was against Yusuf, wasn't it? At a fight night. He knocked him out first yeah. round. It's yeah, always, no, it's but been, saying, they'll talk no, about no. the last fight when he lost. No, he that didn't. was 23 season. No, no, I, I, I'll tell you right now, he's won every single one. Look, against uh, Sabatini, he won. Yusuf, he won. And now Ike, he won. So he's won every single... He just debuted yeah. um, last year. So yeah, so it's his first time he went to distance. Um, yeah. Big future for this guy. Just just his character alone, man. Hopefully they set up that Brian Ortega fight. I really mm. wanted to see that one. You know how yeah, keen I was. I love bro, Ortega. Ortega. If he had beaten Ortega, that's it, bro. Like, Ortega's yeah. ranked third. In the division, yeah, so yeah, if he had beaten Ortega, this guy's a superstar already. Yep, yep. But I'll like, have to wait and see what what they do, you know, going forward. Now, main event: Oof. Yuri versus <laughs> Pereira. Now, who, who wants to start us off? Chama, 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 Chama. Chama. Let's start, start, off, start us off, Emilia. Go for Emilia. What a monster! Uh, I saw it coming. I saw it coming yeah. the whole way. Uh, I knew Yuri would have, would be the exact same fighter in this fight because yeah. watching him against um, Anthony Rakic at yeah, UFC three hundred. Man, the guy's standing there like like that. Yeah, yeah. He, he's not worrying about defense. He, he doesn't defend the leg kicks. He doesn't defend the strikes. And you do that against Pereira. He copped he copped that left hook in the first round. He copped another one on the on the bell. And then going into the second round, I saw the knockout coming. I called it. 
Oh, you I actually didn't, caught it? I didn't call it the first second. Okay. But I was like, okay, this guy's leaving himself open too much. And he's going to get knocked down. Well, he here. did get knocked down. <laughs> like, it really, the, the, the bell saved him. And he's like, come. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, um, I think MMA, you know MMA Guru? Have you yeah. heard of him? Yeah, I've He's like, that. that's what really, like he should have got, like, he was done in round one. Like that that was the punch. Yeah, but yeah. the leg kick wasn't really the knockout. Then round two, he gets, you know, leg kicked and knocked knocked out. Yeah. But um, the, the fight itself, man, I thought on many many videos uh, in a podcast, I think we, we actually predicted this fight twice. And both times I said, I think Pereira loses this. I think Yuri has got what it takes to beat him because yeah. former champion and whatever. But Pereira just pr- proved me yeah, wrong. Yeah, but Petrushka, bro, he has weak defense. He doesn't, weak, have, yeah. he doesn't have anything in him. Um, Pereira, you know what? I said it to my mate yesterday. I said, I know what Alex Pereira was doing. Round one, he's just going to play around with him, you know, him playing in his head, you know, give him a round just to see if he wins or loses. You know what I mean? But then as soon as he gave him that, that left hook, knocked him out one second before that round, I said to my mate, I said, I bet you any second he's going to clean him out with the roundhouse yeah. or a knockout. As soon as the uh, the bell rang, two seconds, roundhouse kick, it, and knocked him out. And we were way. laughing. I was laughing my head out. I was like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like, bro, we we'll, we'll owed a greater fight than that, man. I know. Like, the, the, yeah, the, way exactly. the, first, the way the first fight ended with <laughs> uh, Yuri getting knocked out, like, yeah, yeah. I thought this was going to be a bloodbath. I thought this was going to go the distance. Yeah, man. I thought it was going to go five rounds, but I knew he was playing mind games with him. I yeah. knew. Oh, it was but never going to go five rounds. Exactly. <laughs> I knew it was going to go round two yeah. because I thought, but it, it, on paper, it should have. Yeah. Former champion, bro. The, the Blake fought him with a broken toe on short notice. Yeah. yeah. Bro, like, Everything was going against Pereira and he still got the job either done in way, round two. But either way, Alex Pereira played my games with him. Yeah. That's the that's the conclusion. And apparently about. Yuri uh, said he, he's using magic or something. No, <laughs> there, there's no magic in it. Uh, he lost the fight. Go go on, move on. He's, yes, that, he's that good that he thought he was inhumane or inhuman. Oh, look, you know, he thought it was a robot. I mean, thinking, the way he just snapped his toe I, back. I, said, <laughs> I know, bro. Yeah, even even right. after, after the I kick. said yesterday, I, reckon, I said to my mate, I said, Alex Pereira is a man of steel. You can't touch this man. Look, I think this bloke is body of look, skill. Insane that I'm man. He's on a great run right now. He you know, the, one of the quickest, um, you know, rises up to fame like since Conor McGregor. You can, yeah, you can yeah. compare because he's done this. He debuted in twenty one. Yeah. Um, won the middleweight belt. Went up to light heavyweight. Won that belt. So he's a two weight division now. There's talks of him going up again to yeah. heavyweight. Let's quickly st- touch on that first. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he goes up to heavyweight and faces John Jones? And do you think he beats him? I, I think so because. He's actually beaten everyone in the division, light heavyweight division and middleweight division. Who are, who, who are you going to put on the list against, uh, what's his name, Alex Pereira? You, give me a name. Yeah, Barry, no one's not, not going to beat him. No one really can't beat, can Jamal Hill can't beat Alex Pereira. Uh, Yuri Petruska lost twice against uh, Alex Pereira. Now I reckon Dana White should put uh, Alex Pereira versus John Jones for the heavyweight title. I reckon, I reckon I that's think good, that should good happen. Move. What do you think, Emilio? It's the biggest fight to make yeah. like, by far. But I think John Jones, as much as I love the guy, he's holding up the division. He wants that steep A fight, which no one cares about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think he's going to go through with that. But if it's John Jones and Pereira, that's going to be one of the That's going to hit the roof, yeah. Views. But I don't see Pereira winning the fight. As much as I love yeah, Pereira, yeah. and as great as the story would be, I just don't see him um, getting through John Jones' grappling. I don't know. Something yeah. tells me he does. Like, like, it is the fight to make. You make yeah. this fight. If Dana White's smart, he's shooting it down. He's like, nah, like, um, he doesn't want to... Uh, he, he, he's open to the idea, but he doesn't really want to make it. He even even make Joe it, yeah. Rogan wants it. He was saying... Yeah. Dana I think White, every fan wants Dana it. Dana White in the octagon was like to... Um, sorry, Joe Rogan yeah. to Dana White in the octagon was like, surely you, you give him John Jones. Yeah, but... And yeah. look, I reckon if he faces John Jones, I reckon he beats him. I don't know why. Who, uh, even, though I think, even, I th- even though I think John Jones is the greatest to ever do it, something inside of me says... Alex Pereira does it, considering the run he's had, and I think he'll be the first to win three, uh, three championships, three division three champion, different, yeah, uh, dif- different divisions. Um, but look, uh, like I said, Alex Pereira, he's already done it, everyone in the middleweight and light heavyweight yeah. division, okay. But if he goes to heavyweight division, look, I said to my mate, do you think he should go for one, uh, one uh, match against anyone in the heavyweight division? At least knock them out, yeah. and then you get a title shot with John Jones. Yeah, yeah. But end of the day, John Jones. He's got good grappling. He's got good kickboxing skills. He's got good takedowns and all that. But Alex Perry is only good for the punches, like hard punches. But his left hook is deadly, man. You that's, clip, that's what you got to watch out for. John Jones gets clipped to the left hook, uh, he's, it's, it's lights out. It, I don't care how exactly. great you are, it's lights out. Exactly. But if he becomes a three-division uh, right, uh, yeah. three champion, it could happen. 
Yeah. It could happen. We'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll have to wait that will be one of the biggest fights yeah, yeah. ever in the UFC. Well, if, if he can like pull that off, he's the greatest of all time. Uh, yeah, you know that, what? That, that's what I was going to say. And yeah. then I'd say he's the greatest because yeah, no one's done it. No one's had the run he's had again and yeah. win three divisions and uh, win three belts in three different divisions. Yeah. That's right. And the only people that've won two divisions uh, ch- uh, I can't say it. two, two division, division champion, champion Conor yeah. McGregor and Daniel Cormier. Yeah. They're the only two that've won yeah. and Sahudo as well. And, and, and Sahudo, Sahudo as yes. well because yeah. he's won the flyweight triple, and the featherweight. Triple, triple C. Triple, triple C, C yeah. yeah. But um yeah look another question I want to raise now is all right is Alex Pereira the face of the UFC right now yes. after what he did to Yuri twice now mm. and with all the fans hyping him up right now Chama 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 is he the face of the UFC I think so because after McGregor like how he was the face um, like he was hyping up the Irish fans when you remember when Conor McGregor when he yes. won the fight the, yeah. he said I, I just don't uh, pick him like he said something in the, in the I don't interview just pick the rounds. I, I, I just yeah. don't pick the rounds like Alex Pereira he is the face Look, everyone loves him. Sorry, I didn't I I just knock them out. I picked the rounds. I picked the rounds. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. Uh, yeah. Anyways, but Alex Pereira, he, look, he is the face right now at the moment. I think in this generation right now, um, more than Conor McGregor. I, I can't say that. Like, I'm just telling bro, you. Bro, he, I, like, I know because I, 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 Conor, I, I, look, I know okay. Conor McGregor. Look, he was good back in his days. Like, but is, is Conor McGregor still an active fighter? Is he still contracted to the UFC? I don't know. Is it? But is he still? It probably is. He probably but is. He is. He but is. He pulled he was, out. He was scheduled to fight. And he was meant to be the main event. Oh, I want to hear Milos. Yeah. I want to hear Milos take. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Oh, obviously, like as a whole, we're talking history here. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't pass Conor McGregor. It's okay. not even a debate. Like, yeah, yeah, he yeah, built yeah. the UFC yeah, yeah, from yeah. top, from bottom up. But yeah, yeah. As of now, 2024, Alex Pereira. If you ask all the new UFC fans, well, yeah. why did you get into UFC? I think most of them will tell you Alex Pereira. Alex like Pereira, yeah. Look, They'll tell you Chama. Yeah, all right, Chama. All right, look, before I begin, mad respect to Alex Pereira. I love what he's doing right now. Yeah. I, I love the story he's had, you know, got into kickboxing at 20 years old, the fa- the, the rise he's had just in three years. Mm. I, I respect it, man. And I could, I do think he'll win, again, win that third belt. And I think he will be maybe one of the greatest to ever do it. 100%. I but think he will be, John Jones. Part yeah. of that, all right, apart from that, <laughs> look, man, going into UFC 303, Conor McGregor made $20 million just off the gate. That yeah. was it, he broke a record in itself, and that was the, the that was like a month before it was supposed to happen. That wasn't even a total gate. But he was meant to be fighting right. in the main card. All right, so yeah, yeah, again, yeah, exactly. Look, all right, twenty million dollars. Now, Alex Pereira got sixteen mil. You yeah. know, coming into this replacement fight, you can argue McGregor helped him with that because um, you know people thought they're going to see McGregor, and they, they at that point they already booked their flights, hotels, and whatever, and they probably didn't want to refund. They did have an option to refund, but they didn't. So went from 20 mil down to 16. All right, it's assisted. Now, I'm, I'm going to go through a few stats. So McGregor, 20 mil. Pereira in his last fight before 303 and 300. 300 still in, in itself, you know, 300, big event. Yeah, of course. So it was at UFC 295 against, um, I think it was- Yuri as well. Was it Yuri? It was, yeah. uh, it was two, 295 was Yuri. Yeah. 15 mil. All right. So like, look, in comparison to Sean O'Malley, uh, Strickland and uh, Makachev and even Adesanya, I think- He's better than them in terms of being the face. Uh, they don't have that stuff. But like, I think Nick uh, Nick Caru, shout out Nick Caru and the uh, the Bernard brothers. They had they raised this question on their their um, show. Um, Nick raised raised a good point, and I, I agree with it. And I and I was saying this from before, bro. You got to talk English to be the face of the UFC. Yeah, exactly. How are you gonna sell a f- like Conor McGregor for example? He sold a f- bro. He sold the fight in the press conference. You don't even need to watch the, the fight at that oh, point. Uh, I remember that McGregor yeah. and uh, Mayweather, bro. He, the the fight was done in my eyes, bro. And, and the fight haven't e- hasn't even started. You know, just just from the press conferences alone, that's a good representation of the UFC. If you're gonna have someone leading the pack, leading the organization, go look at go look at that whole scenario between McGregor and Mayweather, bro. I'm telling yeah, you, bro. I that, that. The, yeah. the fight was done before it even started. The way you. you you don't, you, you don't just got to walk the walk. You got to talk the talk. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, people like to say it the other way around, talk the talk, walk the walk. But you got to walk, you got to, you got to talk your way, bro. You got to talk your way into selling a fight. Even, even Makachev has said that, like, that's why all these um, people that come from overseas, that's why they learn the language to sell their fights. Highlight, highlight reels can get you only so far, man. As, mm. bro, look, as long as Conor McGregor is still in the UFC, there's not going to be another face of the UFC, in my opinion, man. Because how are you going to, like, I don't, Look, Alex Pereira, if you put him in the situation McGregor was when he fought Mayweather, I know I'm using that analogy a lot because it's a good example. If you put him in the same spot, he won't sell. He won't sell like McGregor sold. That is one of the, the highest grossing pay-per-view of all time. 
you know, the McGregor Mayweather um, mm. fight, even the Khabib McGregor. Bro, those pre that, that press conference was dark. Just all the words you were saying, just everything. Uh, that's why that that's why this press conference is uh, press conferences for that reason to sell the fight. You know, you can't you can't be selling a fight using a translator. That, that's what yeah, bro, but look, the fans, yeah, Pereira's I know, fans I know. only know one word and it's Chama yeah. how's Chama gonna get you so far yeah, into representing the I UFC know. you know I actually I, I agree with you I don't I don't think he comes close to Connor but I don't like I don't think of Connor as being a part of the UFC anymore because of how but he's still a contracted fighter I know he's still contracted still making like, 20 mil a million. He hasn't, know, he's, yeah. not, he's not an active fighter that's why that's like, right, I, yeah. I agree yeah, with yeah, you that yeah. he's not on the same level as, yeah. as Connor when it comes to that but at the same time, he's built his brand in a way where, like, he doesn't need to speak English, and it's working. He's yeah, got fan is. hype, but I reckon this fan hype, look, man, it's I don't I don't think it's long term with McGregor. It's long term, bro. Like, even when he's not in the UFC, he's the face of the UFC. Of course, it is because he it's, represents it's the UFC. Fun. He goes on talk shows. Larger. You bring Pereira on a talk show, get bro. Like, he's he's not gonna talk. He, he can't talk. He can't yeah, even I talk know. in a press conference. Yeah, I know. I love Pereira, but bro, he's not the face. That's why, like, he's got good hype. I, I'm still still a fan, but I don't think he's the face, if you get me. Maybe it will happen, like, soon, but I'm just saying, but, like... It will never happen. I, as, no, I know. Bro, never but, look, happen. with Conor McGregor, he's done it all. Like, he's a two-division champion. He's He's been all over the world, and he has his own, um, his own uh, alcoholic brand as well. Uh, yeah, but like we're talking about, we're talking about the face. Yeah, of the I know. Highlight reels, yeah, it's got him so far, man. Like the, yeah. the, the rise to glory, it's got him so far, but can only get you so far. You can't, he, you can't um, be the face if you know you can't speak English. Yeah, it, it's a thing. I it, agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I just don't like. I don't view Connor as in the picture anymore, even though he's, con he's yeah, contracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until yeah. he yeah. comes back and actually. Fights, then I'll I'll say okay he's 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 the face and like he, he's but like it. yeah he's yeah like, I, yeah I get I get so what you're like saying. I agree with what you're he's, saying. He's like a I, very active fighter. I get what you're saying with I, Pereira. Like yeah, he's, he's like always we're fighting. on the same yeah. boat, but I think it's like a different perspective. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. All right, guys, that's a wrap up to the Touchdown Podcast episode eighty two. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We went through a lot from league talk, wrestle talk, you know the rest. And yeah, um, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. Thanks, Emilio, once again for thanks, jumping Emilio. On. Thanks for having me. No, and yeah, we'll be going to the Bulldogs Warriors uh, game this Saturday. So keep are we doing a are doing a neutral vlog this week? Are we doing another vlog or are we haven't decided on that? Maybe we haven't yeah. decided on that. If you yeah. want, leave your guys. Um, Thoughts in the comments down below. What game should we go to this week um, besides the Borders and Warriors game? But yeah, um, that's Love a wrap Love you guys. Up. Take it and easy. Yeah, we'll see you guys soon. See you guys. Up the dogs.